This offseason, I really didn't do anything from the backfield. I did a, a lot of stuff from my I always try to prove in the run game. You know, pad level, footwork. Then Okay, you're the Republicans. What do you need? To what are your what are your It's more strategy. You know, yeah. Right? What should people be looking for when they're watching? You know that. Right. Kind of right. But I don't. And I told Bernice. I said so. I've got technically. I've got Will Hurd next week. Sorry, He's Priscilla. No, Mike, check. Mike, check. One, two, three, four, five. A Democrat person. The other side. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, running. He's, not a He's not running. And that's why I said, I go, I could put Joaquin Castro on, but Joaquin's got an opponent. I go, I, I'll try and get Julian, but I imagine he's probably pretty busy this week. So um, I, I just wanted to make sure to, with her that, I mean, I'm not going to do a tit for tat thing one week this, one week that, other than we've got political science professors.
Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was, I, I uh, assumed that, and I was actually supposed to ask you that, because it says this. Travel consideration provided. Happening now. A failed carjacking attempt leads the suspects to try again and succeed, but the car he stole wasn't exactly drivable. I'm Devin Clark, and coming up, we'll tell you how the suspect's luck dried out. A Sunday shopping trip turns to terror. We now have an update on one of the victims in yesterday's Southside flea market shooting and an update on the investigation. It's day one of an unconventional Democratic National Convention. I'm Nadia Romero outside the White House. I'll explain the big changes made and the big issues facing the party. Yes, that is actually rain on the radar screen this afternoon. We're going to take a close look at those showers, see which communities and neighborhoods are very fortunate this afternoon, and take a look ahead if we have any more rain chances down the line. All that coming right up. Plus the possibility of more bounties on U.S. soldiers. U.S. intelligence saying Iran paid the Taliban to target U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. The News at 5 starts right now. They were determined, but two men who the Bear County Sheriff says attempted at least two carjackings today just outside of Kirby were still caught in the end. While the suspects did get away with one of those vehicles that they tried to steal from this car garage, witnesses say they leaked evidence that helped investigators stay right on their trail. Our Devin Clark with details. An eventful morning for Bear County Sheriff's deputies pursuing two suspects throughout the county. My understanding is that they were involved in an attempted robbery over off of Lake Bend. Uh, drive. That incident caught the attention of deputies who tried to follow and arrest the suspects. But after ditching the getaway vehicle used, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the perpetrator's crime spree continued. One of the men tried to carjack a man. That's my mama's truck, so I can't let him have mama's truck. This man who doesn't want to be identified almost became a victim. And I seen him unwrapping a gun and he had it wrapped up in a bunch of T-shirts. And so I pushed the door open a little more and I took off running and ran out into the middle of 78. But the suspect was determined. Officials say he ran to this evergreen lube stop on FM 78 and stole a car in the middle of an oil change. I was shocked. I was shocked. Evergreen lube owner Mahmoud Kadar was down in the oil pit. He had just began to drain the oil from the 2010 Honda when he saw it rolling backwards, the oil plug still in his hand. He went in back way and I saw the police coming in this way and I stopped the police and I told him he stole the car. Yeah. And the police went back and chasing him again. Officials say it wasn't hard to follow the oil covered car, which was also leaving behind a trail of oil. It eventually came to a stop near Walsham in 35 after a small collision with the patrol car. Salazar says the suspect tried to flee on foot, leaving behind his gun. And after a foot chase and scuffle with two deputies, the man was tased and arrested. Tonight, he and his accomplice face numerous felonies. On FM 78, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. And it's unclear when the second suspect was apprehended, but between the two, Sheriff Javier Salazar says felony charges they face include attempt to commit aggravated assault, attempt to commit aggravated robbery, attempting to take a weapon from an officer, and evading arrest in a vehicle. You do it five, a man who suffered gunshot wounds during a shooting at a Southside flea market yesterday morning has died. The 38 year old died at the hospital following what police are calling a targeted shooting. It happened about 1130 at the Mission Open Air Market. In another update to this case, officers say there were actually four people shot, not five, as initially stated. The three other males ages 27, 19 and 14 were taken to hospitals. Their conditions unknown at this hour. Police say multiple shooters were involved, one of which was a security guard who returned fire at the shooter. So far, no arrests have been made. 
In other top stories, San Antonio police are looking for a man wanted in connection with the shooting this morning at a north side apartment complex. Officers responded to the 1100 block of Patricia around 830, where they found a 24 year old man lying in the middle of a parking lot bleeding. Police say based on a trail of blood, the shooting likely happened in a walkway between two nearby buildings. Witnesses told police they heard an argument and then a single gunshot. The victim was hit in his upper body and taken to the hospital. He is expected to survive. Today we learned the name of a man killed in front of his northwest side home late last night. Police say they found Cyrus Holmes with multiple gunshot wounds just after 11 o'clock in the 8800 block of Meadow Range. A witness told police Holmes had gone outside to meet with a man when she heard gunshots. Investigators were able to identify and locate the suspect. At last check, he was in police custody. No word yet on charges. We also know the identity of a woman who died following a four vehicle crash on Goliad Road and Southeast Military Friday night. The medical examiner's office has identified her as 53 year old Olga Balderas de Anda. Police tell us 30 year old Philip Lopez stole a vehicle and drove it to Goliad Road, where he hit two cars before colliding with Deanda's vehicle. Lopez has been charged with murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and theft of a vehicle. The numbers are looking better, but we can't let our guard down. Taking a look now at COVID-19 in Bear County, an additional 59 cases announced yesterday brought the county's total to 44,052. Our death toll did rise by seven, though, to 598. 621 people are in the hospital right now. 279 people remain in intensive care and 192 patients are on ventilators. The United States as a whole, though, continues to set new records in the coronavirus pandemic. More than 170,000 now dead from COVID-19, at least 5.4 million confirmed cases. However, there could be a new development with testing as the debate to reopen schools rages on across the country. ABC's Rena Roy with the latest. At least 21 states in the U.S. are seeing an increase in COVID-19 cases as five states surpass their previous weekly death toll records, including Texas, which now has topped 10,000 deaths. We're not in great shape. We're just getting better slowly, and I'd like to see that accelerate. This is the moment to get it under control. Wear masks. Close bars, decrease indoor dining, increase outdoor dining. A possible new development in virus testing could also help move us forward. The FDA giving emergency authorization for a new kind of saliva based test developed by Yale's School of Public Health, which could be cheaper, faster, and safer. The advantage of saliva testing is number one, it can be done at home. All you have to do is put saliva in a cup. And secondly, um, it is uh, something that can be used uniformly as opposed to the nasal swab. This as parents and teachers coast to coast struggle with schools reopening. The CDC says recent data shows only 7.3% of positive cases in the U.S. have been children under the age of 18. And hospitalization rates for kids are significantly lower than in adults. It is still unclear if they transmit the virus as effectively as adults. One pregnant teacher in Oklahoma begging her district to implement virtual learning after two infected students went to class, causing 25 students to quarantine. My choice right now is risking orphaning my three children I currently have, risking my unborn child, risking my husband's life. Some areas are still pushing forward. New York City, once considered the country's epicenter, will implement a hybrid of remote and in-person learning. Mayor de Blasio says along with nurses and electrostatic cleaning in schools, there will also be unannounced safety checks. In New York and Massachusetts and Michigan and other places, I do I do think we can open up schools safely because community transmission is very low. A new CDC study shows more than 45% of adults here in the U.S. have a greater risk of becoming severely ill from COVID-19 because of underlying medical conditions like lung and heart disease and diabetes. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Everything in the coronavirus era has looked a bit different. So, of course, in a presidential election year, conventions are definitely going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. The Democrats kick off their four night virtual event this evening and are hoping to drive home one big theme.
unity. And Nadia Romero is live in Washington, just outside the White House for this historic week. Nadia. Well, Courtney and Steve, when you think about this Democratic National Convention, it's been going on since 1832. But as you mentioned, Steve, the pandemic has been ruining all the other plans. So why not for the conventions as well? So instead of everyone being in Milwaukee, uh, all the state delegates will be back in their home states. Some of those big speeches we look forward to during the Democratic National Convention and the Republican National Convention well, for the Democrats, they'll be pre-recorded. Some of them will be live, all happening during a two-hour broadcast each night. What usually looks like this is going to look more like this. Driving it, and, and I'd love to start with you, Mayor Buck. After months of constant changes, the first virtual political convention kicks off this evening. I know that this is going to be different, but I think it's actually going to be uh, a little more intimate intimate and unified. That's the message that presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris will be driving home, helping them make their case, former First Lady Michelle Obama and one-time Republican presidential candidate John Kasich, among others. We are unified behind Joe Biden, who's someone that's going to bring competence, has compassion to the White House, someone's going to bring decency. Former Democratic presidential candidate Amy Klobuchar, one of tonight's speakers, said she had a moment of joy when she ended her campaign because she got to endorse Biden. My focus is going to be about the fact that we need to cross the river of our divides and get to a higher plane. A message they hope will stick. 2020 has been a tough year for many Americans, from a global pandemic that has killed more than 170,000 in the U.S. and led to record unemployment, to police killings sparking Black Lives Matter protests across the world. In the latest CNN poll of polls, 51 percent of registered voters support Biden versus 42 percent that say they are for the president. And Democrats are hoping to widen that lead this week. We just need a president and a vice president willing to lead and take responsibility. Former First Lady Michelle Obama is the headliner tonight. And if you remember four years ago, 2016, first night of that convention, she had that famous line when she said, when they go low, we go high. Well, we're getting a sneak peek at a part of her speech, and in it she talks about Joe Biden's grit and the fact that he's lost so many loved ones and that he is the person that she believes will propel the country forward. Live from the White House, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve and Courtney, back to you. Thank you, Nadia Romero in Washington. Appreciate that. A bombshell from U.S. intelligence today indicating Iran paid bounties to Taliban fighters for targeting American troops in Afghanistan. U.S. intelligence agencies identified payments linked to at least six attacks carried out by the Taliban in 2019 alone, including a suicide bombing at Bagram Air Base in December, which killed two civilians and injured more than 70 other people. A Pentagon briefing document reveals bounties were paid by a foreign government to a Taliban-led terrorist group for the attack on the airbase. The name of the foreign government which made the payments remains classified, but two sources familiar with the intelligence confirmed it refers to Iran. The revelation follows the controversy over alleged Russian bounties for attacks on American troops. Russia has denied the allegation and the president has called it fake news. We actually see some gray, dark clouds out there this afternoon, and we do have a few showers. This we're looking off to the west. Most of the activity so far has been on the very far north side of town and even on the county line farther to the north of downtown San Antonio. So let's take a look at the radar screen locally. We have a few downpours that have popped up. Holotus, even New Berlin, just north of Lavernia, has some development. West side of New Braunfels, just south of New Braunfels, Timberwood Park area, and parts of Stone Oak near the JW Marriott. South side of town, not seeing anything at least yet. You have to get down into Atascosa County with one downpour. And even out west, Del Rio, I know it's been around you for a while. You're finally getting in on some of that heavy rainfall farther west of town. So this is good. It's nice to see some activity on the radar screen. It's definitely changing temperatures. Del Rio 86. Rock Springs in the 70s with about a quarter of an inch of rain so far. Seguin still at 100. And temperatures are going to be all over the place because of these showers. We'll talk about that and future rain chances coming right up. Yeah, it's cooled off to 96. <laughs> if you're looking to cut costs amid the pandemic, you might want to start in your kitchen. I'll look at some of the ways we regularly throw away money and what you can do to fix it next.
Well, considering our uncertain economy and a lot of people still out of jobs, saving money is a priority. You might be surprised at how much we waste in the kitchen alone. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reveals the biggest money wasting spots and what to do about them. Let's start with the fridge. Follow mom's advice and don't stand there with the doors open, but a less obvious money waster overfilling your fridge. Cold air needs room to circulate in the fridge. If you overstuff it, it's going to use more energy and cause more wear and tear on the appliance. Your refrigerator's condenser coils collect dust and pet hair that tax it. So to prevent a pricey breakdown, vacuum the coils every six months. Next, your oven. For smaller meals, use the toaster oven or microwave or air fryer instead. Those use less energy. You may even be wasting money on cookware by wearing it out. Avoid using aerosol cooking spray on your nonstick cookware. It can actually build up on the surface and damage it. Using your nonstick skillet for high temperature cooking, like searing meat, will wear out the coating. So she says consider investing in a cast iron pan. At the sink, don't scrub under running water. Instead, use a good soapy soak. Your dishwasher uses more water and wears out faster if you run it half empty, so fill it up. And avoid pre-rinsing. It messes with the sensors. And one of the biggest wastes in the kitchen, spoiled food. Americans toss out a quarter of their groceries, so keep milk out of the door, it's warmer there. Keep your condiments there instead. Making little changes can stop a lot of money from going down the drain. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, I know it's not here yet, but we did hear some thunder yeah. in the distance. Yeah, made us we hopeful did. that maybe we'd see some rain, but that hasn't really happened yet. Yeah, and at least folks, not downtown. No, not downtown. And even the south side of town, not seeing much activity out there. We just have a few pop up downpours elsewhere. It, if you are on the south side of San Antonio or Bear County, you still, I think, will have an opportunity over the next couple of hours. But right now, the folks that are lucky with the rainfall are off to the north and west of downtown. You take a look at the big picture. You go south of San Antonio. We do have a few little pop up downpours between Catula and Beeville, highly isolated and usually pretty short lived. But then you get closer to town here, and that's where you see some of the heavier downpours, even west of town, Del Rio right along Highway 90 west of Comstock, some good downpours. And in Kinney County, we've had some higher winds along with those downpours, a little bit of lightning and thunder, and you go east on Highway 90, and yeah, we have some activity around San, uh, Sabinal, but that's generally falling apart. Now, the downpours we had, Timberwood Park, Bulverde area, have since really fallen apart. But you look at the radar over the past couple of hours, a few of these downpours here really affecting some of the neighborhoods. And even on the southwest side of New Braunfels, you can see the right along 337, still some moderate to heavy rainfall there. And there has been small pea size hail with some of these downpours, which is uh, non damaging, just small, but good rainfall east of 281, we're talking Stone Oak, uh, far north side, JW Marriott area, and right along Evans Road, we've had some very good rainfall, and radar estimates are 1.6 inches of rain here, right along Evans Road there, and that's east of 281. You get farther to the west and some good pockets of rainfall as well, over an inch within some of those heavy downpours, especially north of Sabinal here in Uvalde County, east of 83, and north of Brackettville in Kinney County, over an inch in some pockets. So some folks have been very fortunate. Luckily, I think we have a few more hours of this activity where other areas and other neighborhoods could get in on the rain. Of course, not everybody's going to get it, but right now we're looking at a downpour that's over Holotus. That's this downpour, that nice rain shaft that we have off in the distance. 96 degrees, though, at the airport, so it's still rather warm out there, but temperatures are all over the place because of the rain cooled air and some outflow boundaries from those storms. So Canyon Lake at 82, and we had a downpour over the past hour over Canyon Lake. Kerrville's 87. Look at Lost Maples now. 72 degrees, but Pleasanton is 102. You get to Del Rio, rain cooled air at 78 and Rock Springs 73. Meanwhile, Catula is in the sunshine and heat at 101. So nice impulse of energy dove southward through Texas today as a result of this northerly flow aloft. So the big blue H, the center of it, it's over Nevada right now. It's far enough away where we were able to 
welcome this disturbance in up above us. The door was open and it moved in. I think we'll have a few isolated showers or stray showers tomorrow, but I don't think the coverage is going to be quite as good. Today was really our best shot. So spotty showers through about 10 PM and then partly cloudy. Temperatures falling through the 80s, but again, they're going to be very erratic across South Texas because of the rain. And then tomorrow, a 20% chance and up to 99. I think right around the century mark the rest of this week and on into the upcoming weekend, but not as fortunate with the rain chances beyond today. I well, hope we get some today then. Bad news for the Cowboys out of training camp. Greg. Devastating news. This guy was supposed to anchor their rebuild defensive line, and now he's down and out for the season. When we come back, what happened to their new hire, Gerald McCoy? and Zeke's target improvement for the coming season coming up. Acquired defensive tackle Gerald McCoy has been injured in training camp for the Dallas Cowboys. Been lost for the season. Happened this morning in the Cowboys' first practice in pads since training camp began when he suffered a torn right quadricep muscle in his right knee. You can see non contact. That's according to Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones, who said McCoy would have season ending surgery. Spurs fans are familiar with that same injury since Tony Parker suffered that. The Cowboys had signed McCoy to a three year, $18 million contract to anchor the Cowboys' rebuilt defensive line that also included Alvin Smith, Don Terry Poe, and most recently, Everson Griffin who just cleared COVID-19 protocol has yet to practice with his new teammates. Tough sight. For the first time since the Cowboys started training camp, star running back Ezekiel Elliott is talking. He's the second year of a record-breaking six-year $90 million contract extension. Remember, Elliott had 1,357 yards and 12 rushing touchdowns, the second most in his career last season, while he had 420 yards receiving and two more touchdowns. Elliott says that's what he worked on the most this offseason, trying to improve his receiving stats out of the backfield. 
this offseason, I really didn't do anything from the backfield. I did a, a lot of stuff from out at receiver in the slot and uh, just trying to you know, evolve my game there uh, just so I can be more of a viable source in the pass game. All right, remember, Zeke was one of the first players to test positive for the coronavirus after it was confirmed by his agent. He says the disease cost him about a month worth of workouts here since he had to make sure his heart and lungs were not damaged by the COVID-19. The Houston Texans are hoping that this will be a breakout season for the health tackle Laramie Tunzel. Remember, they came to Houston in a trade a year ago at Miami that also brought Kenny Stills to the team and was thrown into the starting lineup just over a week later. One of the biggest goals for Tunzel is to get more comfortable with the offense to prevent penalties after getting flagged 14 times last season after jumping off sides, and that means being more consistent overall. I always try to prove in a run game, you know, pad level, footwork. Then I look at the pass, pass game, I always try to, you know, pad level, footwork, it's, it's all, it's just trying to stay consistent, man. That's what I'm really trying to work on every time I watch tape. It's just how can I do that over and over again? Washington has hired former NFL running back Jason Wright to be their new team president, becoming the first black team president in NFL history. Wright played seven years in the NFL before getting his business degree in Chicago. Now he'll be in charge of everything on the business side, while Coach Ron Rivera is in charge of the football side. We also have news coming out of the area where another high school football team has to shut down their workouts for the time being. May threaten their season opener as well. Got that for you coming up at 6. Yeah, we've been seeing that around the state. A lot. Yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Stay with us. If you got one of the downpours today, consider yourself lucky. However, we have a few more hours where we'll have a little bit of development out there. It's going to be very isolated. However, I am noticing two boundaries coming together in Seguin. I wouldn't be surprised if that kick starts a new shower. Otherwise, right now, get into Holotus area and right along 16 into Leon Valley. One nice little downpour there with uh, good rainfall within it. Looking good.
Thanks so much for watching the news at five. See you back here at six o'clock. World News is next.